The settlement kits that we get from Fallout 4, including all of the Fallout 4 DLCs, are really nice. We get like a Wasteland Scrap Kit, a Barn Kit from Far Harbor, Concrete from Wasteland Workshop. They're all great, but the fan base of Fallout 4 has a great imagination. And they have been able to come up with some new building kits that are lore friendly, that are thematic, that fit in with the world, and they feel like they should have been part of Fallout 4 from the very beginning. With this video, I'm going to show off three of the best settlement building kits that I've found in recent days that I would love to share with you. So sit back and relax with a classy beverage because this is Oxhorn's Mod Mustard. You'll have to forgive me, ladies and gentlemen. I'm getting over some sort of cold, so my voice doesn't sound the way it normally does. I beg you to bear with me. But first on the list today is Symbiotic Settlements by Warmock. This kit gives you a new estate tile set that allows you to build beautiful brick buildings with pre-war downtown Boston roofs. The cottages you can build with this kit look like they are old pre-war buildings from downtown Boston. Now before we can explore the mod, we first have to install the framework that Warmock publishes for all of his mods. All of his mods share the same framework, and it's much easier for him to publish one framework rather than repackaging it each time he publishes a new mod. The name of his framework is called Eisenwolf's Legacy. Once installed, you actually have to go through a little bit of a quest to activate it. Southwest of the Lonely Chapel, we find a little cave with a Yao Guai inside. Once the Yao Guai is dead, you can loot a note on the ground. This note activates a marker on your pit board which sends you all the way south of the Fort Hagen area. In the river, we now find a pipe that leads to a highway maintenance tunnel. Now, the object you have to find here is pretty tricky unless you know where it's at. I actually had a viewer on Discord tell me where it's at. You gotta look at this vault Tech Boy safety sign and follow his finger. His finger points up towards this hatch in the ceiling, and that's where you find the Eisenwolf Almanac. Now that you've got the book, you've got to decipher the book. So head on back to any of your settlements and you have to build the deciphering tool. I had a hard time finding this until the mod author kindly told me where it is. At the moment, it's in the power miscellaneous section of your build menu. You're gonna find a terminal called text scanner. Now the mod author told me that he may be switching this to the special menu, so this may change in the future. Once you build the text scanner, power it with electricity, and then activate it like a container, and trade the Eisenwolf Almanac. The machine beeps and whirs and makes a bunch of noises, you complete the quest and you get a notification that the framework has been successfully installed. Now that that's done, we can explore symbiotic settlements. You find the new kit in Structures, Symbiotic Settlements. There are six new menus, Interior, Infrastructure, Shops, Estate Walls, Estate Roofs, and Flower Power. All of these come together to build really cool new buildings. You can snap the new brick walls to any foundation just like you normally would. To make the set look best, the mod author kindly provided some brick corners. It can be tricky to get these to snap. Basically, the way I got it to work was to remove one wall, snap the corner, and then replace the wall. This gives us a more flush seam. You can then decorate the exterior walls with vines, which is a nice touch. There are a lot of new doodads with this, including trim for the ceiling that you can place around the roof of the structure. Now in the interior section of the build menu, you find a lot of new nifty things. There's a long counter, which you could use in combination with a shop mod that you might have installed. There are big brick pillars, and these all snap to different places on the floor. And there are a couple of really nice interior stairway options. My favorite part about this mod is the new roof system that he provides. We can now build those lovely roofs that we find in downtown Boston. At least they're reminiscent, they don't look exactly the same. This mod author has given this mod a lot of personal unique touches. There are a variety of different roof types that you can install, including some that have windows, and then you can go around the perimeter and snap a bunch of windows in place. I used this to build a second floor that led to an attic. I was then able to use the wall door frames to create a separate little room up here in the attic, complete with a door. Now, in addition to this new building kit, the mod author has provided a bunch of cool little utilities. He includes these battery boxes. 
These provide electricity, but only during the night. He provides a roof garden plot. You can place these on the flat roofs that you build with this mod, and then inside the planter, you can plant any of the normal crops that you normally find in the game. Now, one unique system he has is actual sewage plumbing. Before you can place toilets and sinks, you actually have to place sewage pipes, which I think is a great little added touch. I found it to be a tad tricky to place, but with a little bit of patience, I was able to get my sewage pipe in just the right angle. Then you can take your sink that comes with the mod and snap it right to the pipe. And then directly next to it, you can snap a toilet. Now, before these toilets and sinks work, you then have to build a sewage plant. This is a completely unique model that he conjured up. It requires six electricity. So while we're at it, let's go ahead and use some of these solar panels. That's right, this mod comes with brand new solar panels, and these solar panels only provide electricity during the day, <laughs> which of course makes perfect sense. Another lovely touch. I chained these solar panels together and then attached them to my sewage plant and that made my toilet and sink work. Very cool. It also comes with a unique way of dealing with water. We get a rain gutter barrel. The idea behind this is that it collects rainwater from the roofs to give your settlement extra drinking water. Each of these barrels will produce two water. The mod comes with nice planters. In two different versions, this is the brick version that I'm stacking outside. And then right next to it is the wooden version. It's like a big wooden box filled with dirt. You can then go through the flower power section to plant a whole bunch of different plants. Most of these are just for decoration, but some of them produce food. None of them produce a whole lot of food. So if you're worried about these messing up the economy of your settlement, I wouldn't fret too much. And the mod also supports stores. It comes with these great store counters. I decided to make a little bar inside this building. It kind of looks like an old timey inn. So I set up a store counter on one end and then I used a short counter next to it to sort of enclose it. It comes with unique vendor signs that you can snap to the bar counter. And then to finally create your store, you can use these invisible store mats. But the coolest thing about them is that they snap in place. You don't have to guess where the settler is going to stand these snap right in place with the countertops that come with the mod, which means that you don't have to have any guesswork. I was able to assign a settler to this shop and she walked right on in and went straight to work. This mod has so much detail and it's not just a mishmash of existing elements in the game. It's got a lot of custom touches that have been carefully worked until they look like they fit in this world. And that's really important to me. It's got to look like it fits in the world. Excellent work. Thank you very much, Warmock. Next up is Thematic and Practical by Five Like. Now, I know I've talked about this in the past, but wait, Five Like has made a huge update to his mod, and there's a whole bunch of cool stuff here that you've never seen before. This mod is old. It was first released on July 8th, 2016, but Five Like cares about this mod and the people who use it so much that he has been updating it with new features ever since he released it. And I love it when mod authors do that. I really dislike it when mod authors Authors will release a part of a mod or an unfinished mod and then abandon it or if they ever change it they upload a brand new version leaving everybody who downloaded the previous one kind of in the lurch that's not what five like has done he's continuing to update the exact same mod that he published almost a year ago and each update contains lots of really cool new stuff let me show you some of the stuff that he's been working on five like plans to come out with a kit for each faction in the game. You can see by the icon he chose that he's got all of the different faction flags. Now, the only one he has done right now is the Brotherhood faction, and this is so cool. For the Brotherhood of Steel, he has created a pod-like build set, and the quality of craftsmanship that he has done here is truly astounding. I honestly can't recognize what vanilla asset in the game he reused or repurposed to create this. It looks, to my eye, to be completely original. With this tool set, you can build a bunch of pods, and you can mix and match the pieces to make any kind of pods you want. This feels like it fits in with the Brotherhood of Steel really well. The Brotherhood is a mobile army 
They probably go in and out of territory all the time, and it makes sense that they would have these pre-constructed pods that they could just drop into a location to set up base. What we're going to do here is we're going to create a foundation suspended above the earth by some of these red supports. Then we just use the wall pieces to create the enclosure of the pod. I'm going to put some big windows here to allow some light in. And then on the opposite side, I'm going to create an open air balcony. It has a door, a slatted window, and then other more traditional pod windows. I then wanted to segment the interior of this pod from the outdoor balcony, so I created a wall that cut through the middle of the pod and then put a door in it. Now these doors are really cool. They slide open just like the doors that we find in some of the abandoned skyscrapers in Fallout 4, but the coolest thing is that they're scripted to automatically close you don't have to close them on your own. Now they automatically close behind you. I love it. I found working with this pod tool set to be extremely intuitive. It just worked. It, I didn't have to think about it. I knew exactly what each piece was for. It made a lot of sense. I can hop on up here and then put all of the different roof pieces together. We're gonna leave that balcony open uh, because I want that to be an open air balcony. And now that our pod is built, we can go through some of the decorations. He's included a bunch of really cool bunk beds, which of course is what you would find in a military bunker. Each of these beds is either one or two sided. The two sided ones, I guess, are going to be useful for placing in the middle of a room, and the one sided versions would be useful for placing against a wall. And then you can place ladders on the side. These do count as individual beds. So if you install a bunk bed, you get two beds for your settlers, and your settlers will use them. They will sleep in their own bed. He's got some storage lockers. Here I snapped this locker system onto the base of the bunk beds, and then you can place a locker door. The cool thing about it is you can place locked or unlocked locker doors, and he includes locked or unlocked versions of the doors that you can place on the pod door openings as well. This means settlers won't go into rooms with locked doors and they can't access items in locked lockers. This is a great way to make sure that settlers don't randomly walk by and take some of your legendary items, for example. It comes with its own stairway. I had a hard time getting it to snap until I removed the door. Then I got it to snap just fine. So in my experience, place the door frame, then the stairs, then add the door and you're gonna get the stairway to work just fine. It comes with window modules. I, I think these are shades to shield the windows from the sun's glare. These are exterior pieces that you can put outside the wall windows. And then it comes with guard posts. And these are really cool. Not only are they functional, but you can build them into your little drop pod sort of structure. That's right, the walls that come with the pod builder do snap to the sides of the guard post. So if you wanted to work this into a little pod-like fortification, with this mod you easily can. And they do work. I tested it with a settler and my settler manned the guard post perfectly. So there you go. This was completely new to me, right? Those of you who have been using Thematic and Practical for a while, this is going to be new to you as well because this is a new update and it is so cool. But there's a whole lot more to this mod besides just the Brotherhood of Steel tile set. Five Like recently updated the mod with a caravan tile set. This is for those of us who have completed the Bunker Hill quests and now have traveling caravan trader posts in our build menu. And this is something that's been bothering me for a long time. The trading posts are nice, but they don't really fit in well. You have to place them on perfectly flat land. The traders bring all of their Brahmin, and their Brahmin get in the way of the town. You can't really predict where the Brahmin are going to go. And they're kind of ugly. You just have a cinder block wall with a Brahmin trough. It looks like Five Like disliked the way trading posts worked in the game as well, because he created a modular trading post building system. That's right, you can now build a custom marketplace place just for the wandering traders. Cricket, Trash Can Carla, Lucas Miller, and Doc Weathers. The way that he's put this together is so much fun and it makes a lot of sense. I'm going to walk you through my build here and we'll be using many of the thematic and practical pieces while we do so. I started by building a foundation and then I placed the Brahmin feed troughs on either side of the structure. Each of the different traders gets his or her own Brahmin feed trough. So for example, Trash Can Carla's Brahmin will only eat and drink out of Trash Can Carla's Brahmin feed trough. In this way, you can predict exactly where the Brahmin are going to go. 
Then I used the thematic and practical Trading Emporium build set to build a rickety looking scrap shack. This has been part of the mod for a long time and it was one of the original reasons that I began using the mod. He's got this wonderful towel set made from bits of plywood and scrap wood just kind of thrown together that allows you to make shacks that really have a wastelander feel. It feels like something someone who's living in a post-apocalyptic wasteland would put together. Once the walls are up, we can use the unique roofs that come with the Trading Emporium tile set. He's got two different versions of a roof, one with corrugated metal on top and another with a canvas top. And you can mix and match these any way you see fit to really create some unique looking roofs. He even has some small triangular pieces that you can use to fill in the gaps. This guy has thought of everything. Once you like your roof and your walls, now we gotta make a place for each of these wandering tradesmen to set up shop. I imagine this similar to the way Bunker Hill deals with it. When you finally get Bunker Hill as a settlement, you'll notice that these wandering traders will walk into the middle of Bunker Hill and then stand behind one of the counters. And I thought that was a really nice touch. With this mod, now you can give a custom place for each of these wandering traders. Each trader is gonna have his or her own unique items. So let's build a place for Trash Can Carla first. The first thing we need to put down is Carla's trade post. This looks like a stash of caps. This is basically a lure. It attracts Trash Can Carla to this location. Once she gets here, she'll then begin to sandbox. That is, she'll walk around looking for things to interact with. The mod is built so that she'll only be able to interact with a few things that are marked to allow her to interact with them. So the second thing we're going to build is Carla's scavenging station. Only Carla will use this scavenging station, so it's good to place it close to the trade post cap stash that you built. Then we're gonna put down a chair that only Carla can use, and then we're gonna put down a flavor animation marker. This is a wall lean marker. Basically, when Carla gets in the vicinity, she's gonna randomly have the option to lean against the wall, sit down in a chair, work on the scavenging station, or sit against the counter to sell her wares. Speaking of a counter, we need a counter for this girl. So let's go into the furniture section of Thematic and Practical and find one of the many counters that he has available. I'm gonna go ahead and put the caps marker underneath the counter to make it look like it fits in here. And then we're gonna put Carla's counter marker right behind the counter. The icon is well marked. It says front and back, so you know exactly which direction Carla will face when she stands there. Since we have this menu open, let's go ahead and build all of the other counters all the way around the perimeter of this small marketplace for each of the different wandering tradesmen that we want to be attracted to this location. Next up is Cricket. Let's put down a workbench for Cricket. Only Cricket can use this workbench. We'll place her counter marker behind the counter, her trade post cap stash. Let's put this on top of the counter, actually. It's a nice decoration. This is going to lure Cricket to this location once she enters the town. He created this nice chair to look like a stack of tires. So we'll put that stack of tires right behind her marker. And unlike Carla, Cricket actually has some mercenary guards that walk around with her. And you can use these mercenary guard markers to tell the game where to place the guards when they walk into town. We're going to put one of these guys up against the wall, just kind of chilling out. And then we'll put another one at the beginning of the marketplace, kind of standing watch. Next up is Lucas Miller. We're gonna place his two guards down in interesting locations as well. One standing next to Cricket's guard and the other one standing by the Brahmin. Lucas Miller comes with a smoking animation, so let's place that smoking marker off to the side. Maybe he takes a break from selling his wares and steps off to the left. And then we'll place his counter marker directly behind the counter. Then we'll take his trade post attraction cap stash, place that on one of the boxes, and then we'll put an armor workbench in the back. Only Lucas will use the armor workbench because he sells armor. Then we've got a chair just for Lucas that we'll place down there, and then we can move on to Doc Weathers. Let's place one of his guards out here by the Brahmin and another one against the wall inside. We can put his cap stash on his counter that's gonna attract him to this counter place, and then we can put down his counter marker 
right behind the counter. Now he's a wandering doctor and he's got a nice little chemistry station. We'll put this off to the side here for him to interact with. And he's got, he's got a wheelchair as a chair, so we'll put his wheelchair against the wall here. He has his own animation marker, I think it's taking MedX, and we'll put this to the side of his countertop. And there we go, we're gonna wire it with some electricity, place some lights, and we're done. A nice little marketplace. Now to see if it works. Now they don't all come at once. The first time I came, I saw Lucas Miller here. It attracted him just fine, but he wasn't in the right spot, and that's because I have a very large settlement. 36 different settlers, each with their own beds, lots of things to do, and sometimes it takes the computer a while to process all of the information. But once the computer managed to process everything in the settlement, the guards walked exactly to their location. You can see this guy walking around to the other side of the little marketplace to stand in the circle next to the Brahmin. And there he stands on guard. Finally, the computer caught up with the second guard. She walked inside and stood against the wall, just like I told her to. See, she's standing right in the middle of that circle. And Lucas Miller was attracted to his cap stash, and then he began to sandbox. He walked over to his armor station and began to repair some armor. And he works just like he normally does in the game. You can talk with him and barter with him. I came back and tried it again, and this time it was Cricket. Sure enough, Cricket's Brahmin was attracted to her stall. I made a mistake. I had a pylon in the way, and I put the trough down the wrong way. So I fixed that, and then the Brahmin drank the correct way from its trough. It took a while for Cricket to figure out where she needed to go because my settlement is so large, but eventually she went behind the counter and manned the counter space. Wonderful! Now we've just scratched the surface with Thematic and Practical. This mod comes with a lot of really cool furniture that looks scratch built. He has a wide selection of beds made from cinder blocks, crates, plywood, dirty mattresses, and a whole bunch of stuff. He's also got a really unique bunk bed. This comes in two pieces. You assemble them in two pieces, the bottom bunk and the top bunk with ladder. They snap together perfectly and they count as two beds in your settlement. He then has a couple's bed that also comes in two pieces. Snap each piece together and it counts as two beds, only these settlers will sleep together. You can dress your beds up even more with pillows. Each of these pillows snaps in place and you can rotate it using the mouse. That way you can make each pillow look a little bit different in your settlement. To make it even better, he's got some cool sleeping bags that you can snap on top of the mattresses. Your settler may not want to sleep on a filthy mattress that's been sitting around for 200 years, but he still wants it to be soft, so he puts a sleeping bag on top of the mattress, and he's good to go. These work on all of the beds, including the couple's bed and the bunk bed. He's got a wide variety of different chairs, benches made from all sorts of scrap wood and crates, a lot of larger chairs made from cushions, drawers, cinder blocks, couches made from sleeping bags and tires, mattresses and sandbags. He's even got a cool little chaise longue, or however you pronounce it. A bunch of more chairs made of cinder blocks, tires, broken toilets, wheelchairs, office cabinet drawers, the list goes on and on and on. This guy is so creative to come up with such a wide variety of objects and decorations that you can build in your settlements. Coffee tables, full-size tables, shelving units that attach to the walls, large standing shelves, a dresser, a big cabinet for food storage, and then he tops it all off with guard posts. These are some of my favorite guard posts that come with mods, because these guard posts look like they've been cobbled together from rusted out cars, cinder blocks, barbed wire, and scrap wood. And they work flawlessly. I have yet to have a problem with any of these guard stations that come with the mod. Settlers will walk up and demand their post dutifully. And then he's got a wide range of other scrap decorations, a huge selection of plywood that you can choose from, crates, shipping pallets, cinder blocks, barrels, old tires, and big rusted out cars. He even has a cute little doghouse which I think is a great touch. What a wonderful little kit, and I'm so pleased that Five Like is continuing to update this mod after all this time. Fallout 4 has been out for a while now. I am still in love with this game, and I'm sure that there are so many people who would hate to see such a wonderful mod like this one to become abandoned. So I'm very grateful to Five Like, and if you like what he's done, you should let him know on his mod page. Thank you very much, Five Like. The last kit that I wanna talk about today is 
box houses by Ethreon. I used this mod to build many of the houses in my outpost Zimonja settlement, and it's got a lot of wonderful features. Like symbiotic settlements, this mod requires a master framework. Ethreon's is called the master plan, which is linked on the description page for box houses. Just install the master plan and then you can install box houses. Once done, you find box houses in the structures, wood, the master plan section of the build menu. Box houses comes with two really cool tile sets, trains and shipping containers. Now you may be thinking, well, wait a minute, Oxhorn, trains came with Contraptions Workshop, why do I need this? Well, this mod breaks down all of the different pieces of the trains into smaller, more modular pieces. This gives you much more flexibility with what you can create with a train tile set. Plus, it comes with shipping containers, and Contraptions Workshop did not come with shipping containers. It has a whole lot of cool stuff. I'm going to show it off by building a little house here. We're going to start by going on over to the train section and building some train tracks. That's right, you can place train tracks in your settlement. It doesn't really make sense to have train tracks here on Spectacle Island, I admit, but hey, think about Oberland Station or even Grey Garden, which is really close to some train tracks. You can use these tiles to build train tracks, and it even comes with this really cool elevated bridge. I'm not going to use this for my build today, but I put the pieces together just to show you what it's like. You can build a train bridge using two end pieces and a middle piece. And then if you wanted to on top, you can build your house. Then we want to take these tracks end pieces and uh, we'll prevent our house from rolling off by placing these at either end of our tracks. Now, if you want, you can use the boxcar flatbed and just put it down and start building on top of that. But for some reason, I couldn't get the flatbed to snap with the train tracks. So instead, go to the floor section and you can find the boxcar train bogey. These are the wheels and these snap to the train tracks. Once snapped, you can then go to the floors and snap these on top of the bogies. In this way, I was able to make a train car where every piece snapped. Now it comes with a bunch of really cool box car walls, and you can mix and match these train pieces with the shipping containers. As you can see, these are much different than the ones that come with Contraptions Workshop. These have doors cut in them so that you can snap door pieces, and it even comes with some windows. But let's go over and try some of the shipping container pieces. The cool thing about these shipping containers is that they come in a variety of different colors. Red, white, blue, green, orange, and yellow. And he even has a small category of boxcar crate furniture, which, which is a bunch of little metal crates that are used as stools or chairs. Now, we already built a floor with the train set, so we're going to go straight to walls, and I'm going to use the green tile set to build some walls. I want to make a double-decker boxcar house, so I'm going to put my ladder down just so that I know where I'm wanting to go, and then I'm going to use the half-a-crate roof to build a roof around this ladder. Then we can just build walls as normal. This is a double door that's great for the end of the boxcar, and then I have another door opening on the side. I'm going to mix and match a few pieces. I'm actually going to use the boxcar windows inside this shipping container, just because I want to have some nice windows, and then we can finish it off by building a roof. Now let's build the other boxcar that attaches to this ladder. We'll use the boxcar floor for that, and then I'm going to make a nice little balcony with the yellow shipping container set just outside the ladder. You can then build some railings. Each of these shipping containers comes with railings that you can put down to make a little bit of a balcony. Now that my balcony is done, I can go back to my orange container and flush out the walls. I'm going to put down some boxcar windows just so that I can see the sea, place down our roofs, and then we need to put down some supports. It does come with some boxcar supports, and they do snap, but sadly the supports don't snap to themselves, but that's okay. With place everywhere, we can sort of fit them in the right spot so that the supports look like they go all the way to the ground. Alternatively, you could use something like the scaffolding set that comes with Contraptions Workshop because these floors do snap to the scaffolding set. This is what I used for my Outpost Zimonja settlement build. Lastly, we need to finish the entrance, so let's put a staircase that comes with the mod and then place a nice big red door on the side of it. And there you go. We've got a little shipping crate slash boxcar home on the train tracks. We can head on up the door, open up the back doors, look out the windows, hop on up to the balcony, see the sights, and isn't it beautiful? A lovely little toolkit. Thank you very much, Ethreon.
And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Those are three of the best settlement toolkits that I've been playing with recently that I wanted to share with you. Again, sorry for the quality of my voice in this video. Never fear, ladies and gentlemen. I hope to be getting better really soon and my voice will return to normal. Thanks for bearing with me. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What do you think of these toolkits? Do you think they fit into the game really well? Or do you think that they're out of place? Let me know in the comments. I read all of your comments and I use your comments as inspiration inspiration for my future videos. If you'd like to download these mods, I link to them in the description of this video. I play on the PC. I don't own an Xbox or a PlayStation 4, so I can't tell you if these exist on those consoles, but I do know that there are a number of really cool kits that you can download for consoles, and I encourage you to share your favorites with each other in the comments below. And did you know that I have a t-shirt shop? That's right, now you can check out my Teespring store where you can find a bunch of t-shirts, hoodies, mugs, and a bunch of other doodads that have Oxhorn images or Fallout 4 inspired images and quotes. You can find a link to my shop in the description below. And if you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers can access to a private channel on my Discord server as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so glad that you're here watching this video today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, if I'm feeling better, which I will be, with a brand new video.